all you wonderful people, today is Friday. That means I'm starting a whole new series. I'm gonna be doing Flashback Friday where I use nothing but older makeup, nothing new, stuff that I have, using it. That's it, just using it. And then I've decided on top of that, I will be telling you, for this time around anyway, my experience in my first year as a travel nurse, I am now about 18 months in, yeah, about 18 months in as a travel nurse. And I wanna share that with you guys and tell you everything I've experienced and learned along the way, some good, some bad, and maybe you're thinking about going into travel nursing yourself or you're a nurse who's about to graduate and you kinda wanna know what it's like everywhere. Well, not really everywhere, just places I've been. This might actually be the, the episode for you to watch. What was I saying? Crappy intro aside, I'm gonna use my Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer to begin because I need to use it up. I hit pan on this bad boy. Let me just kind of give you a little bit of background. So before I started travel nursing 18 months ago, I actually was doing trauma nursing and orthopedics. Long story short, I needed to change. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to learn different things, experience things outside of that environment. However, I am an introvert, a huge homebody. I love being home. I'm not much on leaving my home. I like working close to home. <laughs> Everything I'm saying does not sound like someone who wants to be a travel nurse. The experience as a travel nurse is unbeatable. So what I decided was, well, I'm actually just gonna do local-ish traveling, staying within my state. The most I've done is north to Cleveland. So in all actuality, I just got really bored doing what I was doing. I needed a change, I wanted a change. I found a travel nurse who I was working with who gave me her travel recruiter's information. I reached out to them. I even talked one of my best friends at work into doing it with me, and he did. <laughs> he quit his job as a clinical educator and joined me. We did not get the same assignment or even get to work in the same hospital. We actually ended up going to two different hospitals. And I'm just color correcting with my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector in the shade one. I cannot begin to explain how nerve wracking it was for me to make that jump from staff to travel because of me being an introvert and being a homebody and not wanting to uproot myself. It took a lot of courage to do it. Took a lot of talking to my husband and explaining to him how much better our lives would be because before that, I did about six months of working overtime of 60 hours a week and it was exhausting to see the paycheck I was making every two weeks for working 60 hours a week, sometimes longer because you don't always get out of there after a 12 hour shift on time. I definitely um, felt like, why work so hard for this pay when I can work normal 36 hours and make the same pay, but weekly? And in hindsight, I am very glad I did. It is nice to not become complacent and bored in what you do. I'm gonna take my Giorgio Armani. This is the shade three. This is the Armani Power Fabric Concealer. I'm actually gonna conceal before I do my foundation. Change of pace, see what I can do here. So I won't be giving you the name of the hospitals that I've worked at, that I feel like I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that private. I really don't feel like um, kind of exposing that. And to be quite honest, I, I hold a professional license. I don't want any retaliation and this is not the place for it. This is a place for me to share my passions and just kind of express myself and the experiences I've had along the way without naming and shaming or anything like that. My first assignment, 13 weeks I signed my life away to this hospital. I did not fully know what I was getting into, let me tell you. The start of the whole process, they make you do all kinds of tests to kind of see where your skills are at. You answer questionnaires. They wanna know your baseline. They wanna know your experience. You fill that out. The agency you're with, not the hospital, the agency you're with wants to know where you're at. I mean, there are hundreds of travel agencies. It's kind of hit or miss. You go off of recommendations. 
if you work with someone or you know anyone, go off of recommendations. At the time I started this, I went off the one recommendation I had. I did the exams and tests or whatever compliance exams that they wanted and that worked out great. That was easy. I also got paid for it. They do pay you for that, so that's great. And don't ever take any of those compliance exams if you're thinking about going into travel nursing without getting paid. Always get paid. Get your money, boo. This is my Dior Prestige foundation. I have mine in the shade 1CR. I lost the cap to it. I knocked it over off my shelf some time ago. Cannot for the life of me find it. When I started my first contract, went all the way out to this hospital several hours from my home, I first got a home close to campus. And this is an enormous hospital, let me tell you, enormous. There's people everywhere that want to rent to travel nurses, they do. I found a place within walking distance. I found this place and I hated it. It was hot, incredibly hot because I went at the end of summer. The experience in that place with no air conditioning, no, was not gonna work for me. Absolutely loathed the idea of staying there even through the winter. Could not handle it. I'm a giant baby. I like my air conditioning and I like controlled heating during the winter. Don't want any of that business. So I ended up leaving that place and explaining it's not gonna work out. There were hotels all over campus. I wasn't going to suffer. I decided to just get a hotel. There's a lot of hotels that will do discounts for nurses, travel nurses, discounted rates. I didn't need to do that anyway because my husband is in a program for um, his job where he gets discounts as it is, a membership program I believe. So I was already getting a pretty decent discount. I just wanted to kind of get settled before trying to figure out housing because I, I mean, I wasn't that far from home so I wasn't gonna stress out about the housing. And I'll discuss stipends at a different time because that definitely comes into play. You, you, you have to be careful but that's a different story and that's a long story and a different conversation. I got a hotel very close to the hospital. I started my very first day, they do orientation. Your first couple days are just orientation, getting your bags, figuring your way around before you step foot on the unit. Now, this particular place, there are a lot of units. We are talking blocks worth of buildings. So I did not know where I was going what I was doing, all I did was put the address from the emails into my Google Maps, look for it, and go. I got my badge that morning, but no one said, we'll get the badge after orientation. So I ended up being an hour late to orientation because I thought, oh my goodness, I need to go get my badge so people know who I am. I sat in a classroom with about 75-ish, if I recall correctly, during the conversation, travel nurses from all over the country. And we first introduced ourselves, even though I was late, they were still going. And I shamefully <laughs> introduced myself towards the end when they got around to me. I mean, we all had different backgrounds, experiences, lives. Mind you, I'm in my late 30s at this point. I started my nursing career late. I did not start in my 20s, but I am very quick to learn and I am determined. The worst thing about this orientation is they do make you do other tests before you ever are allowed to go to your unit, before they contact your manager and tell you, and that's just this hospital. I'm sure other hospitals are like this. Not all of them though. But this one in particular makes you sit down in this classroom, perform functions on the pumps that they use, perform functions on the glucometers, the Zoll machines, everything. But then they make you sit down and do a telemetry test. If telemetry is your weakness, you definitely wanna study well beforehand. And there are plenty of websites and YouTube videos online that you can go and watch and take practice exams on to help you so that you pass this. Because if you don't pass it the first time, they schedule you to come back on a different day and then you're not going to start on your unit that week. You're gonna be behind on your contract start date and then you're gonna be there later and everything else and it's just one giant mess. Now, telemetry is not my strong suit but it's also not my weakness. I've had plenty of experience doing it. I did not work primarily on a cardiology unit so I still had weakness going into this because there's still a lot of rhythms you just don't see regularly. 
but every nurse, regardless of what you've done um, in the past in your specialty, should always be familiar with all the lethal rhythms. Every single lethal rhythm you should have down pat. I did pass that telemetry test, but I was nervous, and I get really nervous because if I don't know what I'm about to look at, or if the images or the strips are blurry or, or whatnot, I clam up, I get real nervous because, oh my God, this is my job. What happens if I don't pass this thing and everything is up in smoke? And once I go down that rabbit hole, it's really hard to pull me out of that rabbit hole. But I passed it, I moved on. <laughs> Put that mess behind me. Texted my husband. I was like, oh, thank goodness. It's over. Oh. Went to my unit after being cleared the very next day. And they put me with one of their staff nurses to shadow. So the first day with this place, all I did was shadow. And I was placed with an older nurse who'd been a nurse for about 25 to 30 years. Absolutely wonderful person. Let me tell you, she's full of knowledge. Everybody does things differently. So the person I was with, and this is gonna be true for everybody, may or may not do things the way that you are used to doing or the way that you would want to do something. But you gotta make a good impression and you've gotta follow their lead so that when you are finished with them, the report back to their manager is, oh, it was wonderful. They were great, I had a good time, they were easy to educate, it went well. You definitely wanna start off on the right foot that way. I signed on for night shift and every hospital I've ever been to has trained me the very first week of my 13 weeks on day shift. That's not a problem. I don't mind it. And it's not really training. Let's be honest. It really is not. It's just kind of giving you an idea of the unit, where you need to go, where you're going to find everything, their policies, because policies are different no matter where you go. And then the following week, I went ahead and started nights. And I started nights on weekends. I signed my contract just for weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. I was not about to deal with the chaos of day shift and weekdays or night shift and weekdays. I like my weekends and if I'm gonna be a night shift nurse, I will take weekends any chance I can get. This is my Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Powder. One of my favorite brightening powders. It is heavenly, but it's very matte. I am a dry skin girl, so I don't use it as often. So doing nights, let me tell you, don't listen to people if they say night shift is easy. <laughs> no, there are good and bad things about night shift and there are good and bad things about day shift. Everyone has a different opinion because sooner or later, someone's Meemaw and Papaw they're gonna be climbing the walls and you are gonna to have to get some help. This is my NARS Laguna One. I'm gonna use that with a Sigma Kristen Dominique contour brush. This particular hospital did not have a cafeteria open for night shift. Everything closed at seven o'clock on the dot. What they did have in abundance was Starbucks. The unit itself, when I did my interview with the manager of that floor, I did not know at the time that she was leaving the unit. She explained to me this is a urology slash nephrology unit. They get a lot of surgical patients, did not get a lot of off patients, like off specialty patients. That was not the case at all. That was a big bold fib over the phone because it was done over the phone. I found in my time on this particular unit that I definitely took care of more patients off service than on service. The patient population was very heavy acuity. There were no guidelines, so to speak, for a distinction between med surge and intermediate. So when I discussed with my manager, I have a lot of inappropriate patients on my assignments for this unit. Well, actually, we don't have an intermediate unit in this hospital. All of our units take intermediate patients. If you are considering signing a contract for travel, put a ratio in your contract and see if they will accept it because most critical care nurses will put that in their contract and the hospital will abide it. They don't ever have a problem with it. So why med surgeon nurses don't do it is beyond me. 
an intermediate because you'll get a lot of intermediate nurses who still get shafted that way. Definitely try to put that in your contract because in all reality, they are going to try to take advantage of you if possible because staffing is tight, budget is tight, and they want to max out their nursing ratios as much as possible before calling anyone else in. My Kaleidos Symphony Trio, I'm going to contour my nose because I got a big nose and it needs to shrink. They were always short staffed for phlebotomy. Every night we'd get the message scroll through. We are experiencing short staffing in the phlebotomy department. Nurses are encouraged to draw their own labs. Well, let me tell you, while I don't necessarily have issues with drawing my own labs, I do take issue with when my ratio is high, having to do all the work of every other department and not having a pay increase for that. Most nights I had one PTA or PSA, whatever you call them, and six patients, but only two of those, two to three, depending on the night, sometimes it was a good night and I'd have three, only two to three of those patients I would have a tech for. So the rest of them were primary care for myself. This is the Hourglass Diffused Light Bronzer. Absolutely one of my favorites. So I was taking care of three to four primary patients. And remember when I said these are high acuity patients actually, and some of them very inappropriate for med surge. I did go into this ahead of time knowing this was pretty much the case for a lot of hospitals across the country. And, and I'm specifically talking about the United States. Now a lot of this sounds like I am really complaining. And yeah, this is the bad side of it. I figure why not get rid of the bad side and why not go through the bad side in this conversation first? Kind of get that out of the way and then talk about all the good stuff. You know, like bad news first, good news after, that kind of thing. With having to do majority of my work, a lot of times there's just no help and every nurse on the unit is dealing with the same thing. This is the Melt Honey Thief blush. It's very hard and you were doing a lot of the lifting, sometimes in awkward ways because help was not always on the way. And I would be lucky if I got it on some occasions. Now, this went on for months and most of the time I would cry myself to sleep that morning. I went home on occasions and told my husband after crying several times, I am stressed beyond belief. Sometimes I feel like my license is in jeopardy and I should never feel like that. You should never, ever feel like that. And if you do, leave. I did not leave. In fact, my dumb butt decided, well, I made really good money. And I mean really good money. So I should suck it up for just a little bit longer and renew my contract. So I renewed and I renewed on a float pool. So instead of being in a situation where I'm assigned to a unit and just constantly floated, I figure why don't I get paid more? Just do the float pool and have a different assignment every single night because it's chaos anyway <laughs> for the good side of this. And, and believe me, there are good sides of this. The experience is invaluable. I cannot begin to tell you how much I learned and have taken away from that very first experience, that very first contract. This is the Ofra Samantha March highlighter. This, what is it, Start Inspired? I'm just gonna take the champagne shade here and use that one for my highlight today. And this is a melt brush. I am very happy I did it in the long run. I cannot begin to tell you how much I took away and how much I've been able to apply to my other contracts I've done. Because in all reality, and, and I say this very honestly, in all reality, I learned more in that contract than I have my years as a nurse staffing. I got to meet a lot of incredible people. There were some amazing staff members who could really help you have a great experience, get you through the night, because the nights were long. Get you through the night, woo, this is bright. 
and keep you smiling because there was a lot to cry about, and I mean a lot. <laughs> Traveling can be very lonely. Make friends where you can, when you can. That's pretty. I like how my face looks, yay! I'm gonna take my Dior powder. This is in the shade number one, my backstage powder. Cannot believe this was discontinued. The patience. You're gonna have hits and misses with patience, believe me. You're gonna have hits and misses. If you're a patient or you've ever been a patient, if you're getting a different nurse or a different tech every single shift and you never see that same member ever again, get a mirror. Get a mirror and look into it because I'm telling you, it's not the staff at that point. The company I'm with right now, I have been treated really, really well, so I haven't had a reason to look for a different company. Minus a hiccup here or there, but the pay has been pretty much the same as a few other companies I looked at. Now that's also the difference is pay is different for each each company because those companies negotiate pay for their travel nurses with the hospital. So each company is gonna negotiate a different price. I'm gonna do my eyes in a separate video. I have Valentine's looks that I wanna do for this entire month. I wanna just start that kind of a series. I will, however, continue this conversation in that video. I stabbed myself in the eye with my mascara, my bad gal bang mascara. That thing nearly put my eye out. It took me uh, a hot minute, one to stop crying and two to let my mascara dry enough right here to kind of scrape it away. But I went ahead and I used a pair of lashes. This is the Juvia's Nubian, Nubian Lash in the Style Kush. I did have to trim them. I trimmed them to more of a half lash because they're pretty long. My advice for new grads is 100% work in the specialty you want to travel as whether that's OB, ED, critical care, med surge, it doesn't really matter. Just work in that specialty before you ever travel. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would consider subscribing because I think I'm gonna continue talking about my experiences as a nurse and as a traveling nurse. The affiliate links listed down below. Thank you so much to Martina Lilly for helping me get that set up. If you decide to shop for anything that I have used today, those links do earn me a small commission. You do not have to use them, obviously. But just as a full disclosure, I do earn a small commission on them if you use the links. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way up until this point. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.